Hello and welcome to Good Morning Thailand. I'm Jay and this is Alex Latour. Mm, good morning. He's back. It's Friday. It's Lumberjack Friday now. I actually forgot to tell Alex that today's uh, Lumberjack Friday. But, uh, For me, it's horror movie Friday. It's so horror, I gotta horror movie Friday. I represent my yeah. killers over here. Yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. we're going to be talking about some of the headlines from across the Thailand. Mm. Uh, before that, now... I apologize. Yesterday, I did the show and I told everyone that uh, we're going to take some of your questions. And then I completely forgot after I went off for 20 minutes talking to our guest. Uh, But we actually made a special members video for you answering all your questions, which will hopefully be not hopefully, which will be released today. Today, we also have the voice of God. So I'd like to apologize the voice of God for ignoring her yesterday. (laughs) But uh, we will be doing the Q&A at the end of the show today. So... um, Please let the questions come in for all of the topics that we're going to be talking about, and we shall discuss it near the end of the episode. We'll we'll try not to ramble so much today, I think, so we'll see. So for now, let's get Mm -hmm. on with the headlines from across Thailand today, starting with Thailand's perilous roads. Now, they Mm. have claimed 75 foreign lives this year. Uh, Yeah, that's that's, it's early in the year for that, huh? It is. Thailand's deadly roads uh, have claimed lives of 75 foreigners so far this year. Mm. A further 2,886 foreigners were injured, according to the data from Thai RSC, an accident information center. Mm -hmm. And foreigners getting into road accidents in Thailand regularly um, make headlines, but much more go unrecorded by the media. Sure. And uh, data recorded from January the 1st to February 15th, that's not very long, reveals that 2,099 people in total died in road accidents in Thailand so far this year. Of those, 75 were foreigners. Now, statistics show that 106,133 were injured in road accidents so far this year. And uh, 75 foreigners killed on Thailand's road this year. 69.71 were male and 30.29% were female. Most of the victims, 75.31% were riding motorbikes. Now, for those of you who watch GMT regularly, um, you might know about my opinions on driving motorbikes in Thailand, especially if you're a tourist coming here on holiday. Just don't do it, man. I get it. It's fun. Mm. You know, you don't, sometimes you don't, they don't, even ask you for your motorbike driving license yeah. or insurance. They just give you a helmet and they're like, go on your way. Sure the question they ask is, have you seen a motorbike before? Yeah. Yeah, good. All right, get on there. Go have fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and it seems, that, you know, there's no incentive to, you know, check people yeah. and make sure they're okay. And tourists are on vacation, overconfident, having a good time, right? Not really thinking about consequences. And so here are the results. Have you ever driven mm-hmm. a motorbike here? Yeah, but it took me six months to build up the courage to do okay. it. So like, I was not cavalier like yeah. a lot of these people. I was a total wimp about it. And uh, eventually I worked up the courage and uh, yeah, now I love it. But, y- you know, how much of this does it say it was in Phuket or in uh, okay. Bangkok? Or is it all around the country? So it's all around the country, but mm. roads in Chiang Mai province claimed the most lives. Mm. That's right. So careful if you're in Chiang Mai. When nine foreigners lost their lives on the roads in 2023 alone, mm. six foreigners were killed in Patum Thani, five in Samut Prakan, four in Surat Thani, four in Trat, and three in Bangkok. And wow. the rest were spread across Thailand's province. Yeah, I think it's because you know, foreigners are just a lot more skittish yeah. and nervous to drive a scooter in Bangkok. I think. Especially in Bangkok. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was thinking like Bangkok, like why would you want to drive a motorbike mm. here? But I'm talking about more on the islands of Chiang Mai. Mm. Uh, yes, you know, you get a bike there easily. Mountains too. Places like mm-hmm. Phuket, yes, you get the bikes easily. Mm-hmm. And But it's 2,886 foreigners were injured. Now, w- there's no statistics on like, is it severely injured? Is right. it just bruises? But it's common, especially on, uh, on Phuket, you'll see they'll be bandaged up. Sure. You'll go to the hospital, you'll see foreigners bandaged up. You, you, you know, you're in the tourist hotspots, they always have bandage around their knees. Yeah. And it's always involving a motorbike. So right. be smart, I would say. Don't take the risk because I feel like it's not worth it. I get it. Sometimes it's a thrill and 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 fun, but don't take the risk. Uh, it's be- it's better to spend that two hundred baht to- on that taxi. You know, it, and it's like uh, I, I just feel that that these these injuries, a lot of them don't even go reported, right? Yeah. A lot of people will fall off and like really scrape up their knee, but then just you know suck yeah. it up and not like yeah. do anything about it. So these numbers probably don't include a lot of the even probably. minor stuff that yeah. are going on. So these could be bad ones maybe yeah and i've also mm. reported like some of the motorbike uh companies they, they you know mm. they try to scam some of the foreigners mm. they do and talking about scams mm. uh 
we're going to continue talking about Phuket Health Spa, mm -hmm. uh, has, which has been slammed by travel agencies for ripping off foreigners. How have they ripped people off? Right. So a uh, prominent uh, health spa in uh, Phuket, it's the, the Fumantra Cafe and Massage. They've announced that they're no longer going to be accepting reservations for, through travel agencies for customers anymore. Now, this is because the prices that the agencies are charging customers are different than the prices that the spa charges. So they're kind of like doing the middleman thing where they, you know, they, they generate their value by making it more convenient. Mm -hmm. But they had told the spa to not show the prices to the customers that were coming in. But of course, you got, you know, there's menus everywhere when yeah. you go into these places. So, you know, they walk in, they see the price is completely different than what they had paid. They get into a row, start yelling and mm -hmm. fighting, and then they come up with the, they find out, they investigate and see it was this agency that was uh, charging exorbitant prices and just ripping off customers. So um, this has like a couple of effects, right? Like, first of all, customers don't like to pay more than they have to, obviously. Yeah. That's, we're all consumers. But second of all, when this kind of thing happens, all of a sudden your Google reviews start taking a hit, right? Like if you're a, uh, if you're a massage uh, spa, Right. Or if you're if you're a hair salon or a restaurant, any kind of business, you really rely on that reputation. Right. On on people Googling you and seeing what how many stars you have. Mm -hmm. So um, these people having this negative experience at the spa could adversely affect their business in the future. So um, but the other question is, is that fair? Because they were working with this agency without yeah. actually knowing their um, practices mm -hmm. right so um where does the responsibility fall is what i would ask you what do you think <clears throat> it's there needs to be a regulator no mm. i mean uh the responsibility is with the agency that tried to rip them off they need to be shut down mm. so i guess this could be considered a police matter in a way where the police could be like all right you're extorting money from people mm -hmm. and uh, it's false advertising and it's just wrong and and i think the tat could have a say in this as well because i mean they've they've tried they they always try to keep a image of you know oh like we're, we're very tourism friendly and we mm -hmm. st we're stopping the scams and this and that mm -hmm. so they need to stand up and prove a point as well and yet there's those travel agencies are everywhere mm -hmm. right so it's hard to know how can you spot a reputable one versus a yeah. non-reputable one and also at the same time right this agency advertised a price to them they agreed to the price that they paid to the agency mm -hmm. and then you know finding out oh well, there's like yeah the, I, I feel like that extra cost is the cost of the convenience of going through the agency yeah. so should these tourists have been upset at all in the first place i think it depends they were, on hap they were happy paying it they yeah. just got upset when they realized that that's not what they normally charge. Right, but they, you know, they got, the massage was arranged for them, right? They, they didn't have to, you, I don't know, how, how hard is it to yeah. arrange a massage? But, <laughs> and I also don't know how high yeah. the prices were charged, but it was high enough for them to cut off ties. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a matter of reputation, I think. And uh, so many people, so many businesses in Phuket are based yeah. on tourism and single-use customers. Yeah. Well, hot hotels have a markup, no? I mean, like, we mm -hmm. all know if you go mm -hmm. walking around, mm -hmm. you'll find, like, a one-hour Thai massage for 300 baht, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, if it's, like, a fancy place and let's say, 500 baht. Right. But if you're in a hotel, so it'll be 1,500. Oh, yeah. Because right. right, they're used to, that. now they're targeting the Westerners who are used to paying that price yeah. back home and not really realizing, you know, <laughs> if they just walk two feet, they could get the same thing for a much smaller price. So, yeah, tourists are a lot more willing to part with their money. All right. I yes. Think as well. I guess. Okay. Mm. Well, I'm sure the viewers will let us know their comments as well. <laughs> uh, for now, we're going to move towards Padilla. Now, unfortunately, a massive fire broke out in Padilla uh, mm. near a massage parlor. Now, this is a, a, a very devastating fire that struck Padilla. A massive electrical fire broke out in front of a Padilla massage parlor uh, last night, and firefighters rushed to the scene. I believe this was the night before last night. Mm. But yeah, firefighters rushed to the scene on Padilla's second road in Soy 13, where a fire was burning overhead and wires and signs in front were also on fire. Meanwhile, terrified passerby uh, watched as the incident unfolded unfolded <laughs> and the firefighters were eventually able to put out the flames however some residents uh cars were damaged by falling 
uh, of burning wires. Mm. So, um, yeah, and thankfully and luckily, no injuries were reported. Tourists who witnessed the blaze told uh, that they heard several explosions from the fire. Mm. And um, so. an an unidentified witness claimed that the fire was caused by workers who tried to install an overhead sign. And uh, their equipment got entangled with the wires and thus ignited the blaze. That's according to the witness. Uh, and allegedly that seems to be the case. The exact cause of the fire is still under investigation. Now, something strange is going on in Paria because this news comes after a whirlwind of other recent fires in Paria. Last week, Chinese tourists fled from a terrible blaze at a Paria pool villa. Just days before that, a blaze gutted a Canadian man's 20 million baht luxury villa. Bummer. Uh, <laughs> which is what in Ban Lamung. And only days before that, Yet another fire broke out at a condominium in Paria, also in Ban Lamung. Uh. So uh, Ban Lamung has been uh, <laughs> having a lot of fires. Mm. But uh, yeah, some, it seems like a crazy coincidence. Is I'm there, is call there an arsonist now. on the loose? Uh, no, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, hopefully and definitely not. But yeah, it, it does seem strange that uh, Paria is being dominated by these wild, uh, devastating fires right. everywhere. So are they, uh, has it mentioned, are they mostly electrical fires or are they being caused by a myriad of different reasons? It seems like, yes, like mm -hmm. they're all, some of them are under investigation, like what really mm -hmm. happened, this and that. But yeah, it seems yeah. like this one that happened uh, uh, the most recent fire was because of an electrical uh, mm. firing. But again, someone saying that, oh, I clearly saw someone, you know, mess something doing up. Doing something yeah, that's supposed yeah. to be doing, right? That whole occupational health and safety thing doesn't really... <laughs> uh, there's yeah. a lot of violations I see in Thailand. Yeah, um, that's true. Just workers, like, hanging off a window, like, doing the cleaning. And I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, that's terrifying. But, um, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, Scary man, fires are like one of the, the one of those terrifying things. They just they start and yeah. then a lot of these old buildings and old construction just go up so quick. Yeah, that's too. the thing. It's especially like, I mean, I don't know how when these fires do take off, uh, especially in places like Yawarat and like like in mm -hmm. these older buildings. Mm -hmm. um, Firstly, they're constructed in a way that they're they have so many fire hazards. Mm -hmm. so we we've had uh, news of. Uh, the Mountain D Club that was on fire and like mm. killed a lot of people because wow. they don't even have proper fire exits and, right. and, and like a proper procedure when when events like this happen. So people mm. just don't know what to do. They start, you know, stampeding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's like a stampede. There's mm. a panic, people on fire. So talent has to grow in this aspect. Definitely like safety and, you know, safety hazard and, and fire hazard. Um, well, because you see the, the there's other fall. We've seen it in the news recently with mm -hmm. Syria, for yeah. example, right? Like the earthquake, that, uh, not Syria, excuse me, Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, the earthquake that hit there was not a particularly strong one compared to many major earthquakes. Yeah, it was like 7.8, 7.9. Right. Yeah. It was still big, but um, uh, it was a, a lot of the death and destruction was caused by poor uh, building codes, mm -hmm. right? Like uh, poor regulation of construction and that kind of stuff. So... This is important, right? Mm -hmm. Like when 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 stuff goes down, right? When there's emergencies, yeah. that kind of preparation saves lives. So um, yeah, I think it's an important thing that uh, should always be improved upon, right? There's there's you're never gonna achieve perfection, but you can keep striving yeah. for it at least. <clears throat> All right. Um, on that note, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna take a quick break. Once we come back from the break, we're gonna be talking about a Japanese tour scam. And uh, hopefully end the show on a high note, uh, talking about the reduction of plastic bags in Thailand. Find out more after the break. Ready and join the fun at Carnival Magic, the world's first Thai carnival theme park. Don't miss the opportunity to experience the enchantment of the magical wonders at the one, the only, Carnival Magic Phuket. Welcome back. You're watching Good Morning Thailand, and this show is brought to you by Carnival Magic. It's a carnival fantasy, one of the newest attractions in Phuket, Thailand. Check it out with your family. You won't be disappointed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to talk about some scams. 400 people so far have fallen victim to Japan tour scam. Now, a lot of people love traveling to Japan from Thailand. It's one of the most popular destinations for Thais, mm -hmm. but... Um, this particular scam has uh, resulted in a 14 million baht loss. Now, representatives from 10 travel agencies have filed a complaint in the, with the Central Investigation Bureau after being lured into buying 14 million baht worth of fake tour packages to Japan. 
Over 400 victims have been duped by the scam so far. These representatives for the group claim to have purchased tour packages for a major company based in the central province of Patum Thani to resell them to their clients. However, they later discovered that the packages were entirely fraud. Mm. The victims were enticed by the low cost of the packages and believed that the company was reputable and subsequently invested a significant amount of money to obtain the best possible price. For instance, a five-day package was sold for approximately 21,000 baht, even though a round trip from Bangkok to Japan usually cost 20,000 baht. After reselling the packages to customers, the buyers learned that all of the booking documents were fake, which resulted in some companies having to arrange and pay for a new package to prevent customer complaints. Now, the Department of Tourism was reached out by, uh, you know, one of the people that were affected, and uh, they were basically advised to initiate a lawsuit independently. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, the fact that, you know, a round trip cost 20,000 baht and the package that they were buying for a five-day stay in Japan, including the flights, cost 21,000 baht, should have been a giveaway because... Mm, right. uh, Hey, post COVID, you never know, right? <laughs> I, I mean, think there's a lot of yeah, travel deals, just but tour packages, and then you know, there's like now we're post post COVID though, so things yeah, are getting back to normal. And this is funny. So where did where did the scam originate? Was it from the uh, intermediary in Thailand, or was it the Japanese company? No, so it was the intermediary in Thailand. Okay. So it was it was a, a, apparently a, a reputable, excuse me, a, a reputable company based <laughs> reputable. in the central <laughs> province of Patum Thani, and. Uh, in, in in their minds, they were like, "Oh no, because because we know this company, yeah. they're reputable. Um, it's fine. We know them. They they do good business. Let's just buy it from them." But uh, I guess so forget what I was talking yeah. about earlier. Apparently, 14, reputation means yeah. nothing. So fourteen million baht was enough to <laughs> uh, do the. So wrong what did they just thing. make off, and did it's the money's disappeared? Well, or? I actually don't know. I ah. think they're still there. Well, uh, what? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I I don't think this is the Time for the lawsuit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the news story didn't say that somebody like ran away. They were just right. like, "Oh, these packages didn't exist," kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm guessing they ran away. Surely. Yeah. Right? I mean, I don't think they're gonna stick around. Yeah, I would imagine that was probably all done online through some kind of website that was easily like you know. It's it's funny the the you know we get all of this training and warning about scams and blah blah blah. But man, people still fall for them all the time, and yeah. the scammers get away with so much. And yeah, there's uh, different uh, levels of scamming. You get true. the scammer call on your phone, and then you get scammer tour packages. Right, uh, man. So uh, you you got to do your research, right? Like yeah. this is uh, check check the reviews and see that kind of stuff. But this stuff is always going to happen anyways because people are looking for the better deals, yeah. right? And uh, sometimes they're way too good to be true, yeah. like this one. Imagine that twenty one thousand baht to like, go to Japan. What are we for five days? Ridiculous, right? Let's, Let's like, do what? it. Six hundred dollars U.S. Let's right? go like, tomorrow. Like, yeah, it's insane. Like, for, hey, all of us, guys, gang, I guess, we're I going guess, to Japan. Yeah, but I, I guess that's the package the tour companies were paying. Right. Uh, so that might be like the the cost of acquisition or whatever, and uh -huh. then. Um, they'd resell it for a higher price. They, sure. They'd sell it for maybe thirty-five or something. Yeah, the middleman economy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so once they bought it and they sold this to the customers for like, let's say, okay, thirty-five thousand, mm -hmm. and then they realize it was fraud. A lot of them had to come up with like, mm. okay, now, now we actually have to pay this and mm -hmm. make this work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that. So be, do be careful who you buy your tour packages from. A lot of scams out there. Yes. <laughs> now, <laughs> thankfully, we have some more uh, of a somewhat of a positive story to <laughs> end today's headlines. Thailand's plastic bags uh, have uh, reduced. So Thailand's getting better in its plastic usage. Right. So, uh, yeah, Thailand's plastic bag use has plunged by about 150,000 tons in three years. So uh, the Pollution Control Department, the PCD, launched campaigns in 2018 to cut the use of single-use plastics in Thailand. Now, the first set of campaigns uh, was specifically targeting plastic shopping bags and styrofoam food containers in markets. Um, and they were largely successful, according to the, uh, the uh, PCD. Um, so I wanted to ask you first, before I continue with the story, have you noticed a lot less plastic usage over the past several years? Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, I think there was a really big change before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. That was like, oh, everyone was like really going into it. They were mm -hmm. like, yeah, let's go green. Everyone's bringing their bag to 7-Eleven. Now it's like mm -hmm. after, after the pandemic, I get it. Um, during the pandemic, you know, when food deliveries were being made, plastic went 
crazy again. Mm-hmm. Nothing's changed right now. Yeah. A- apart from Seven Eleven, like yeah, some people do take their bag, but mm-hmm. they're like, yeah, I'll pay that extra five baht. It's nice to like actually pay that extra five baht too, because at least there's some sort of cost mm-hmm. like to us to try and discourage it a little bit. Um, another fun thing they do in Europe, like a lot of the plastic bottles and like you have to put a deposit in, like a one dollar dollar deposit when you get any sort of like plastic bottle, oh. and you can go into any store, give it back, they'll give you your euro back. Oh, nice. So it's like a really nice system that encourages you to just return your stuff, right? You're going to get a, a euro back if you're environmentally friendly. So there's fun incentives that you can put in there to encourage people to be more uh, aware and conscientious, mm-hmm. but you have to incentivize them mm. some kind of way. Because otherwise, plastic's too easy, right? We, especially, like you said, post-COVID, everyone was getting everything delivered. Yeah. How are you not doing that? But it's mm? it's also enforcing enforcing that. Like, mm. I mean... I don't blame them, you know. It's 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 what they like the smaller um, shops down the road, like selling your your local your coffee seller, yeah? Like that, yeah. Um, and like you know, the, you've got the plastic cup mm-hmm. with the plastic top put in a small plastic bag, right? You know, I D- get that. Oh god, the drinks in the plastic bags. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about all that. That one still throws me off. But uh, yeah, I I have noticed in the markets though, not a lot of styrofoam. I've seen those biodegradable boxes are being used yeah. a lot more. Um, but those are a lot more expensive than the cheaper I'm ones. I'm sure they are. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's the idea. There is going to be a cost to getting to these green uh, uh, goals. And by the way, another one of their goals is to eliminate all plastic garbage by 2027 in Thailand. How do you feel about that ambitious goal? <laughs> we're four years away from that, by the way, guys. <laughs> oh, apparently 2050 we're going to be zero, uh, zero carbon, carbon emissions yeah um mm-hmm. Helen's always been very optimistic i try to be uh, in my own delusional mind uh, i hope that we I- even if we come close it's winning right mm-hmm. so yeah let's be positive yay yeah 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 i think and thailand has like an an extra incentive to keep things beautiful because it's so much tourism industry involved mm-hmm. so yeah, it seems like there's a country, Costa Rica, in Central America, they are incredibly, like, all yeah. of their policies are focused on preserving their environment. Bhutan's my favorite, the mm. only country in the world that um, has positive carbon emissions. Ah. Yeah, they have more trees than, they, they, they have more trees than, uh, what, what, yeah, they produce more oxygen than oxygen carbon, Oxygen than right? carbon, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what I was that's getting how trees to. work, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's uh, uh, that sounds like, you know, I don't know what the real numbers are actually, but, it, you know, this, this is good signaling, right, like mm-hmm. that, that there are attempts being made to you know, make Thailand a greener place. So, good, right. I think. Good, good. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for all of those stories, uh, the full stories, you can find them on thetiger.com and much more. Mm. For now, we shall take uh, some comments and questions. So if you do have any questions regarding any of the stories or anything you'd like to ask me or Alex or the voice of God, uh, please keep them coming. Uh, For now, we're going to look back at some of the comments that you made throughout the show. Take it away, voice of God. Hello. Hello. (laughs) So I have the one about the Phuket Health Spa. Uh-huh. thing um so the health spa is slamming a travel agency right for ripping off foreigners so it's a lot more expensive and they're booking online mm-hmm. right so khalid uh Isaldine said that it's transparency say clearly that it is a fee for the convenience of booking through websites the quality of choice and securing securing the time and service as opposed to showing up at the place and finding it full so honestly if they were just mm-hmm. a little bit more transparent about that like about why it's a little bit more expensive. What was his name again? Khaled. Khaled. Solve the problem. Thank yeah. you, Khaled. Like, yeah, that's uh, that's it. Just be transparent, right? Be upfront about yeah. what is going on. You don't have this issue. So. Have you guys been, whenever you go to a place now, do you try to book in advance? Because I've, now if I want to go to a restaurant, I can't help but think like I need to book first. Mm. Like when back mm. then, I never mm. thought of that. In Bangkok, I always book before I go. I I get anxiety in in the big city. Like in Phuket, it's like, it's my home. I just know I can just walk in. I know the restaurants. Mm-hmm. I yeah. probably mm-hmm. know the owners there. You know, it's mm-hmm. like a small island. Um, right. yeah. Name dropper, huh? <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean. Like, um, like it, it, 
you're more comfortable in your home. Like when I come here, I'm like, ooh, the big city. Like coming mm. from an island, I'm like, I, I got a book. I, I can't <laughs> coming wait. from an yeah. island. It was Phuket. Like, yeah. on, like, <laughs> like you make it sound like you were stranded or something. Maybe I was. Yeah. yeah, but but I, you know, it's funny. I, for Valentine's Day, mm. I, I booked like a ten weekday, ten days in advance. Mm. All they had were like two counter tables, like right in front of the kitchen. Oh, really? <laughs> so, like, we had to like sit next to each other for it. So yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. I think generally, I, I think generally it's not so bad. Friday, Saturday, mm-hmm. probably gotta do it. Yeah. Um, but mm. eh, I don't know. Yeah. Bangkok's also getting a lot busier these days too. Yeah, so, so it's always mm-hmm. better to book. Yeah. We also have a comment from PG Santa, and now it's about Thai massages. Okay. And he said, seriously, Thai massages hurt like hell while it's being done. Mm-hmm. But afterwards, you feel great. Have you guys had a Thai massage before? Yeah. Dude, I love to get beat up. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I need, like, I just get in there, man. Like, <laughs> I, I've commented on these uh, questions before, but, like, yeah. um, uh, basically, they try to overcompensate for my big body. So, uh, like they go extra hard, and uh, you, every like you know you'll have the smallest, lovely Thai lady just like yeah el- elbow uh, yeah, me yeah. and like be like okay I gotta like Does that feel good yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I often find myself to tell them like please don't go that hard, mm. and then what happens is they go too soft. Yeah. Like, no, no 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 I still want you to hurt me. No, I just don't want no. you to destroy my body. They should give you like a chart like from one to ten, and they're like, I, I want yeah. seven please or something like that. A uh, chart. But um. Yeah, like most places go quite hard, and yeah, you you are kind of like suffering through it, and it might even hurt you that day. Mm. But the next morning, you wake up and you're like, okay, yeah. it's releasing some stress. So, mm. like my one of my most recent massages, it, I, it was like that. I felt I was like, all right, this guy is really hurting me. Yeah. Guy, by the way, I'm 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 equal opportunity yeah, yeah, yeah. for massages, but yeah, he was hurting me really badly, <laughs> and I was like, will I feel better afterwards? I might feel better afterwards. No, yeah. <laughs> it was way <laughs> worse afterwards too. It's, so. it's happened to me where like like they did it so hard that like my bones my bones were hurting for the next two days <laughs> mm. and i was just like yeah never again like that was like oh and with it oh, <laughs> let's just move on let's Bad just yeah. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Let's oh wait move on. i'm sorry i just yeah. want to address one more comment about mm-hmm. that then we can move on sure. so uh mojo 82 had a similar experience to you where when he went for a massage it really hurt that for the next two days he needed to go back to another salon for a massage <laughs> an oil massage for the pain. Yeah. So that the pain's relieved. It's yeah. a, another scam. That's how they get yeah. you, right? Like, yeah, 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 the first yeah. guy beats you up, and now you need to go to another one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, unrelated to the topics you talked about today, we have a question from Kelly. Hmm. Hi, who's the new guy? North American. Hello, neighbor. Where are you from? Hey, how's it going? Was it Kelly? Kelly. Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Uh, yeah, North American. I'm from Florida. Like, yeah. Everything you've heard about it is true. That's why I ran away. Um, but yeah, I've I I've just as soon as I graduated college, I jet set it off to China to teach English. Cause Oof, jet setter. I, I couldn't. Well, I could I couldn't get a job in America. I okay. was like peak financial crisis. Okay. Like uh, mm. it was terrible. So I, I I just I'll teach English in China for a year. Twelve odd years later, here yeah. I still am. Like and it's. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, a lot more fun than America, <laughs> in my opinion. Sorry, fellow American. Uh, not trying to hate, but uh, yeah, it's good for a visit okay. to the States. All right. Anyways. <laughs> You're from Miami, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you support the Dolphins? No, actually. So my mother's oh, from Tampa. You Tampa, yeah. yeah so Tampa, Tampa Bay has been the original one. And that was nice when Tom Brady showed up and yeah. won us a championship. Yeah. Good. yeah. It's, it's called Tampa Brady now, right? Tampa. Well, not anymore because I think he's finally retired. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah, finally. <laughs> he was just waiting for that divorce from Giselle, I think. Okay. <laughs> now he's free. Hmm. All right. Anyways. Okay. I can't mm-hmm. see any new questions, so I'm going to grab the ones that I took before. Mm-hmm. Um, when you guys were talking about the massive fire in Paraya, mm-hmm. people were commenting about how hazardous the wiring is in Bangkok. It's so visible, right? Like you can just see it all <laughs> over the place. Like yeah. it, 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 spaghetti. It <laughs> got international attention when Russell Crowe was shooting a movie here, uh-huh. and he took a picture of of the electrical wires, posted on his Instagram with the caption "Bangkok Dreaming." <laughs> oh, when he woke up up in the uh, early in the morning, and mm-hmm. and he was actually like 
the 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 government took it really well, and they were like, "Oh my God, Russell Crowe is talking about us." Uh, he was uh, made a, like a international ambassador what? for the country or something <laughs> for an Instagram post. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and what happened? Like, it went to the point where, when the next Bangkok governor was elected, right. or it was like during the elections, Russell Crowe was one of the guest speakers, <laughs> who was allowed to ask a question to the <laughs> Bangkok governor. Why not? You gotta love Thailand, man. Yeah, you just gotta Let love it. Ask, are you not entertained? I don't know. It's like, in your opinion, Governor, like, what would you change? It was, it was a good yeah. question from his side. He yeah. joined through Zoom. It was amazing. Oh, fun. Yeah, funny. I mean, honestly, there's kind of an aesthetic appeal to it, though. <laughs> like, really? I kind of think it looks cool. It makes the streets look kind of cool. I mean, yeah. you, you see it all the time in Japan because yeah. uh, there's a lot of above ground wiring for all the earthquakes and stuff. Mm. So. Uh, you see a lot of Japanese streets that are lined similar, not as messy as you yeah. see in Bangkok, but I think it creates kind of a little bit of a cool aesthetic, like an urban jungle kind of vibe. Mm. I don't know. I like it. <laughs> Maybe not safe, but yeah. for, for the arts. Yeah. <laughs> Shannon Denise says, hey, this is the first time I've seen the voice of God. That's oh, right, really? Shannon. The voice of God has been revealed. Mm. She's come out of, well, she's come down from, uh, you know, just on sitting high. on the clouds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, from her high heaven, not mm. even high horse, high heaven, <laughs> and uh, I mean, I was blessed revealed us with her presence. I was revealed for the past two weeks. I think. Yeah, I think it's been a while since Shannon might have joined, but yeah, she's joined at the right time, Carmel. <laughs> Here we go. Marta says, "How to check the credibility of a tour company by TAT number?" Mm. That's an excellent question. I have no idea if that's <laughs> even not. possible. I've uh, never had to use tour companies, so I wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's what we're trying to do here, right? Provide a little insight for tourists. Um, Can I be honest? Yeah. I've actually never booked a tour from a tour company. So I've had plenty of good experiences booking little tours through tour companies. Okay, and, yeah. here we go. We're going to give both our experiences. For yeah. me, I just book, <laughs> I just go to the place and I book like from the local provider there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or, yeah, I've never actually booked a a tour before in my life so okay i haven't done it online before so like before i arrived no so yeah okay. so yeah I, I arrive and i show up and then i book okay. with like yeah that's what i do yeah yeah so i'm oh, okay so some people are prepared i get it you know some people want to like have the security of i've already got my pl uh, plans in order my schedule i paid for it I See, can be stress-free. I hate that, though, because then something doesn't go according to plan, and now mm. your itinerary is all messed yeah. up. And uh, like, so. I mean, what what can you do? Like, especially if you're abroad and coming in, can you get their license number and, like, mm -hmm. you know, check if they're legally registered? Yeah, they might be, but your best bet would be the reviews, you know? Like, yeah, exactly. you, you go online and check them out, and, like, how many reviews do they have? Are they a mm. reputable company? Mm. Right. They have Five stars, one review. Probably yeah, don't go to yeah, that probably, one. Probably <laughs> not, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that that's the best, but that's what personally I would do. Um, same, like that's. I don't know how yeah. credible it would be mm -hmm. to even look at look at their registration number and get their license. They could still mm -hmm. be. Yeah, bad I mean, people. Yeah, I mean, there's still plenty of like big companies that yeah. do all sorts of shady practices that are registered and mm -hmm. reputable. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's a bit of a crapshoot, but uh, I don't know. Try your best. <laughs> so, would you recommend that they like, if they're coming from abroad, they can just find out while when they come here or. It's best that they do their research beforehand. Research the the activities you want to do, mm. and uh, uh, you know I don't know actually now that Thailand's getting a lot busier. It might be better to start booking ahead of time in advance. Yeah. But usually in my experience, there's plenty of like tour agencies that are ready to sell you whatever a little tour package yeah. as soon as you arrive. Like so. you you know for for example, okay, you're coming to Bangkok and then you want to go to Phuket and you want to go to PP. Mm -hmm. There will be many options for you mm. to go to PP. Like you don't have to necessarily book that uh, PP tour or mm -hmm. like, you know, you're going to Krabi and then you're going to go to Riley or something. There will be many options that are over there. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, you know, one of the things about this is like, so for Americans, if Americans are traveling out to Thailand, mm. it's a big journey. And Americans don't get a lot of time off. So this is probably the preferred way for Americans to travel to Thailand is to pre-book everything, make sure everything is organized and they they know what they're doing mm. day by day. And then you fall into the trap, yeah. maybe. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> there, was, there was this one time where like... Um, mm -hmm. So, so my dad works in the hotel industry, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I had a friend coming from, um, I think they were traveling from the Middle East mm -hmm. to Phuket. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think she had, they had 
visa on arrival, yeah. which was a guarantee. It was, and this was during pre-pandemic times. Yeah. And like business as usual, they were like, "Can you please provide me the hotel booking and stuff? I want to go to the embassy uh -huh. in the Middle East to get the visa." And I was yeah. like, "No, no, no, you don't have to. Like, that's a, like it's cheaper if you just." Come fly, right. yeah, fly to Thailand, and get the visa on arrival. I was like, no, 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 no. I want to go to the embassy and I want it on lockdown. I was like, no, no, th there's no question about it. Yeah, like, like just, just fly over. She's like, yeah. oh, I'm traveling with my mom and my family, and I, and I don't want to risk it. I was like, this, okay. Some this, people stress, yeah, man. I get it. Like they get stressed about it. They and show up to the airport yes. five hours before, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> Work, working in airlines, like it, it really doesn't matter where you're from. People yeah. get anxiety. They get stressed. They they oh. panic when when things are in order. They get lost. And I was like, no, no, calm down. It's okay. Just relax. My my, it's all good. No, I get so stressed at airports. I'm like the worst. Are athlete. you? Like, I'm the so most anxious, chill man. person ever. I I think I've I I've worked in airlines, but it, uh -huh. just in general, I yeah. just. I'm like, I just have like a, if I'm going to miss it, I'm going to miss it. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to stress until very, I get there. Very if zen. I, like, no, yeah, life is good. Like, like life that, is yeah. good. There there was a time where I was, I was like, like running late for a flight and I was in a train and like, you know, I see people around me like they they were in the same mm -hmm. flight and they were like, I'm like, we're in the same train. I can't make the train go any faster. Yeah, yeah. I'm either going to make it or I'm not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Either way, my life is still good. What is it like? Uh, uh, accept the things you can't control, right? Exactly. Mm. Like, so Try your best. Of course. <laughs> oh did I God. did I run to the check-in counter? Of course. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and airports are so not ready to handle the crowds that are coming in right now either. Too. <laughs> yeah. Like and and like yeah. working in airlines, I know if they're gonna hold that flight for you, they're gonna hold that flight for you. It's not because of who you are and how much money you have. Mm -hmm. If they're not gonna hold that flight, trust me, pal. They will not hold that flight for you. There'll be another one. Yeah. As as as, right. as much as some people think they matter, they don't. Oh man, you'd be surprised looking at all those videos shouting at the yeah. The, 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 the I was one of those people, people man. Yeah, at, yeah at, at one point oh. in my life, like people were just like, oh, I can't get to my place because of you, and I'm oh. like, just hurling abuse. <laughs> Yeah. Like I'm sorry, there was like especially. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. He's okay now. We, we had right. some people from <laughs> Chicago in in the live chat, yeah. and for some reason, especially people traveling from Chicago, you know, they got crazy weather. They got the snowstorms and stuff, City. and yeah. their flight came in delayed, and then they missed their connecting flight, and then they, you know, they're like, "I can't believe you didn't hold the plane." I was like. <laughs> I can't control the snowstorm from where you came from, sir. You're six hours late. Did you want me to hold the plane for six yeah. hours? Yeah. Oh, man. People feel very entitled because they pay a lot of money for their flights. I get it. Right? Yeah, and yeah, they're yeah. going very far. Yeah, yeah. And airlines I don't love, have the best yeah. reputation a lot I just, of the time. The best part is like hearing the excuses. So some people have genuine excuses, but then every mm. now and then one flight, there were like 50 people with like a death in the family. Mm. Just be like, I, I have to get to where I'm getting. I'm going to a funeral. Mm. You're coming from Chicago to Phuket and you're going to a funeral? What? Jesus. That's At a least way to go to realistic. be sad. I'm sorry. Oh, well. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways. I think if I traveled with you, Jay, I'd probably get so much anxiety. Oh, I'd be Because I'm the zen, kind of person zen. that's like, no, we have to make it. But he's like... You know what? If we can't, then we can't. Yeah. We'll go to the no. Come yeah, on. I don't like that. We're gonna go to the lounge, <laughs> sure. We're gonna go oh. to the lounge. We're gonna have a croissant. Uh, we're gonna have some. Croissant. <laughs> we're gonna have a shitty orange juice. <laughs> yeah, Speaking yeah. of lounge, a uh, sick puppy asks, you know, why go to the airport to miss your flight? And then he says, I get to airports early because I love the food in business lounges. Oh, yeah. So he. Yeah. Well, if Mr. you if you Fancy yeah if you have the business, yeah if you have yeah, the honor yeah. of going to the <laughs> business class, like us normal people, yeah. will just have the I'm airport the Burger canteen. King, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Same. BK nice. baby, BK. I'm at the food court. What yeah. Burger King? Yeah, like so. Okay. Burger that King lovely. at Burger King at airport is very expensive, but um yeah it is. yeah the the <laughs> local subways or whatever. Um, yeah. That was my first job ever, Zen. by the way. Sandwich oh, yeah? artist. Yeah. Nice. You guys need a sandwich. Zen. Guys, Please don't call yeah. me. <laughs> remember, guys, next time you're traveling, Zen. Mm. Oh, no. Relax. <laughs> I think I'm only Zen if I... Just think of me. And <laughs> R-E-L-A-X. I'm so relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a comment here, and I want to know what your thoughts are on it. The best plan is no plan when traveling. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's me. Yeah. Really? <laughs> oh no. Now I'll stress about the flight, but when I get there, I'm like, all right, let's just see. Let's what's on? What are the restaurants? What are we doing here? I don't think I've ever arrived at an airport before an hour before my flight. Oh yeah. International or domestic. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. They, you know, they no. say you should arrive three hours before. There's yeah, a reason so for no, that. No, no, but so I think I don't that, actually the, have the question to. is when you do the travel, yeah. have you made plans about yeah. what you're going to do or are you just going to freestyle it? No, no, I've made plans. I'm yeah. a planner. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, so you're not a so, planner. Yeah, so uh, yeah. For uh, so one trip I did, it was awesome. It was my first trip to <laughs> Europe and I'm in Paris. I'm yeah. like, okay, I don't know what's going on this weekend. And I check it out. There's Lollapalooza on with Gorillaz headlining, like one of my favorite bands. I was like, oh, cool. Love Lollapalooza. Guess I'm going to that then. So I had no idea about it, yeah. and I just said, let life happen a little bit. Yeah. But sometimes you do need to plan. Like, I went to a sumo tournament in mm -hmm. Japan one time. Okay. That you can't just stumble into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the Japanese are very good with time. Yeah. yeah. No, but what I mean is, like, it's not, like, overconfidence or arrogance. It's like, mm. once you understand the system, mm. you understand why. Like, People do stress. People do spend, uh, you know, th there might be issues with your baggage, right? Mm -hmm. You might have excess baggage. You might have to go and pay for excess baggage. You might have uh, an oversized bag which can't go into the normal belt. You have mm -hmm. to go and send it to the special belt. Oh. You might get to the immigration. You might have run out of visa. Then, okay, oh, you've overstayed your visa, sir. You need to go pay the fine. You go and pay the fine. Or... Um, you know, they might have some security checks. Then you get through, and then once you're after immigration, you're fine. Dude, but you're for, stressing me out. Yeah, oh, exactly. God. Like, the way you're listing them all but down, for me, that's why it's yeah. best to arrive uh, earlier. But he's like, nah, it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> I'm like, oh. For me, I'm like a light traveler. I'm like, okay, three hours, two hours, whatever. Uh. I show up 60 minutes before the flight because I know the gate closes 45 minutes. I know it's going to take me 15 <laughs> minutes from the check-in counter to get through immigration. I know that all my papers are in order. I know I don't have an oversized bag because I'm traveling lightly so just go check in i he's normally flying from phuket i know no 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 no, no, no. Yeah, exactly. i'm talking about international as well uh, uh in international as well yes i know like bangkok airport is a lot uh, larger but um if you know your way around you'll be fine guys you just stress for no reason just relax life is good uh, <laughs> I, think, I think that's done. why you need a balance when you're traveling like yeah. if you're traveling alone then that's fine but when you're traveling with another person there has to be that balance of someone mm. being a re relaxed mm. and the other person yeah. Stress they won't. Like they won't close the effect. gate. Like, yeah. They won't close the gate at least fifteen minutes before. You know they say they'll gates will close forty five minutes before. They don't actually do that. <laughs> yeah. They start boarding around that time, mm -hmm. and then yeah. But like, fifteen minutes you're kind of pushing it. Don't do that. Yeah. But you know, up until thirty minutes, they'll still let you in. It's a little peek behind the terminal counter. Can I can I give you a there. special uh <laughs> special um feedback if you know you're running late and yeah. you want to do some you want to be a little naughty yeah because like you want to what i mean is like you want to what you want to do is when you get to the airport check in your bag whether it's small whether it's big if you can check in your bag mm -hmm. and then if you want to be a little bit naughty as in like you're going to go to your gate very slowly mm -hmm. and, but you want to do some shopping you know you want to you haven't seen mom in a year you want to bring her some chocolates and some like thai scarf but the shop is all over there and you're mm -hmm. gonna run late to the gate is this, is this being that. naughty buying your mother gifts like, no no no, no. Okay. <laughs> well, you're, you're being naughty as in going to the late that you're the last sure. passenger you know yeah, they're yeah, calling yeah. alex alex right, yeah. mr alex latour oh, the, the, please make yourself to the gate the yeah. overhead of shame yeah. like right the <laughs> they they're more likely to hold hold a flight and hold the gate for you because your bag is in the plane they don't want to go inside uh -huh. the plane <gasps> Because each bag has to come out separately. Oh. So the thing is that they have to reattach the belt. All the bags have to come down one by one until they find your bag. And then that's the, the, the plane can never leave with your bag on oh board. Oh, my God. So we just got our unethical life pro tip of the yeah. day right there. Okay, <laughs> so check your bags and take your time, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so like an, be okay. an airline, actually, by, by, by rules of the airlines and, and the CAAT. They have uh, to is, do that. Yes, they're not allowed to f leave the mm. airport with your bag. Because oh. your bag could have anything inside it. Mm. And yes, they've done security checks and everything, mm. but still. Yeah, so the last flight I took, uh, my bag did not come up on my plane, but it came on the next plane. So I just had to oh. wait. Like, yeah. They'll forget your bag. Yeah. That's a whole nother thing. <laughs> but they can't, yeah. Oh, man. One time, one time I flew from it, it, Bangkok to St. Thomas in the Caribbean. It was 24 hours of flying. Yeah. That's where my mom lives. So I, have to, like, I was visiting mom. And uh, 24 hours of flying, you're disgusting, nasty. And you just want your bags and you want to go home. <laughs> None of my luggage arrived. Like, I was just it's like, no fresh no. clothes, nothing. I was just like, oh, God. Nice. So Spirit Airlines, don't fly them. <laughs> Do you guys want to hear this uh, embarrassing situation? So Mandalik S. Rao said, the most embarrassing situation I had when I delayed a flight, he entered. 
and all the people started clapping. <laughs> For oh, his yeah. late Love arrival it. in the plane. Uh, oh, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> Love it. Well, oh. it shows that, like, you know, it's like they're, they're being yeah. good humored about it, at least. <laughs> like, yay, we can leave finally. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is embarrassing. But, you know, yeah. it happens. <laughs> yeah. Just mm. feed, feed back to Shannon, Denise. Why are you so calm and collected? I'd be walking a nervous wreck. Yeah, like like Alex yeah. and Carmel here. I'm with you. Shannon, you got a goose. Goose faba. You got a lot of experience. You got a Marishka Hargate. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. TSA security is horrible here in a uh, USA. Yeah, I have no comment on USA TSA. They could do your random checks and all. So TSA? yeah, TSA yeah. is like not great. Yeah, like, tell me about the TSA. Why do people? Uh, why are people so like you know? So first, the of infamous all, TSA. It's really invasive, like the way that they do security in America. Um, and they, you know they all have those machines where they do the. Yeah, yeah, thing yeah. Where they scan, and there was a big controversy when those first things first came out because your nether regions might show up in like oh. the body <gasps> scan. So they fixed that. That doesn't. Okay. Now you just see like a little cartoon silhouette instead. Yeah. 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 But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, that your shoes are off. Yeah. Take the belts off. To, like strip down. Right. <laughs> like yeah. it's just. Uh, Take everything out. It's just, it's an ordeal. It is slightly it annoying, so yeah. Because every time I wear Jordans, if you're wearing high top shoes, they always ask you to get it out. Oh yeah. Yeah. But it's not even that. It's the attitude, man. So like, oh, okay. airport security everywhere, usually not in a good mood, right? <laughs> like mm. kind of like just impatient, dealing with like travelers or answering the same questions every single day over and over again. But for some reason, the Americans are uniquely mm. pissed off <laughs> when you're going through security. So, um, yeah, it's just famous. The lines are long. And, of course, like America and everything, there's a fast pass. right? You pay more. You oh, get really? Yeah. What, what is this, an amusement? What, 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 exactly. what you have a fast express line? Are you not aware of how uh, Americans try to monetize everything? <laughs> like, you know I mean? So, yeah. There's... That is crazy. Oh, yeah. Dude, like it's so what for like fifty dollars? Yeah, I don't know what the price is. Like, uh, it's all they also have it for uh, global entry. So for going through customs, they have like a fast lane for, through customs. Just if you register, and you can just like. How like, do you speed check? Uh, like. So all you do is like scan your passport in a machine, and it's like, green light, cool. You you go through. Like so, I my, my fiance is from Australia. So when I go down there, that's all I have to do. There's no, I don't talk to an agent. I don't do anything. I just beep. Now in America, they have that capability, mm -hmm. but they don't do it. <laughs> like, like some, they, like you can pay to be able to do that. Um, I think some airports let you do it, but mostly you're going to be talking to a customs officer, mm. who is in an even worse mood than the TSA. <laughs> okay, they are authoritarian okay. on those front lines. Yeah. So, anyways, I didn't like his face. Do a special check. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyways, right. yeah. All right, border control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they make shows about this, don't they? I've seen the, I think someone, yeah, Damien Jester commented about customs in Australia. I've seen shows about it, how they're like, but they're extremely strict, like with what food you bring in. Mm -hmm. And I think at one point they wanted to kill Johnny Depp's two pet poodles. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, remember he had to be, he was forced to do an apology? Yes, he was. <laughs> he was forced to do an apology. Um he was shooting, I think, Pirates of the Caribbean or something. Yeah. It was really funny because I think the, the customs government officer at that point went on TV and uh, he was talking about Johnny oh, Depp. Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. yes, like, no one in Australia is allowed to bring in... Australian over here. Yeah, <laughs> allowed to bring in animals. And it doesn't matter who you are, even if you were voted the sexiest man alive yeah. uh, by <laughs> Times Magazine or whatever. Look and I was like, why is that necessary to yeah. mention? <laughs> Well, yeah, that's the thing. It was a conservative politician in Australia oh, who okay. just wanted to pick a fight with Johnny Depp and create yeah. a little name for himself, right? Yeah. Like, you know, Australian politician spars with Johnny Depp. Yeah. Johnny Depp broke a rule. I'm pretty sure Johnny Depp's dog is probably, you know, got its shots. Like, yeah. I think it'll probably be okay. Yeah. Some exceptions can be made. But the fact that they made him apologize publicly mm. is like one of the, I, like, I just felt so bad for Johnny Depp. Because this is in the Amber Heard era, yeah, yeah, yeah. too, when like everything, like, oh. we didn't know about the Amber Heard stuff, but he was in the middle of it then. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you see, when he does the apology, you see he just looks so dejected. Yeah. And I'm just like, come on, it's just your dog, dude. Why are you so sad? Oh, Amber Heard. That's why. <laughs> oh. Poor guy. Was... Poor guy. Well, M Mike Bangkok says America's TSA pre-check was 85 USD per year mm. f a few years ago. Cool. 85 USD. I mean, wow. Okay. Fast pass, baby. <laughs> so mm. yeah. Fast pass for airports. You want to save some time on the security yeah. line. There you go. 
All right. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we'll end the show there. We've going, been going on for almost uh, 15 minutes now. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed today's show. If you have, please comment in the comments section below. And check out the stories on thetaggy.com. For now, I'd like to say thank you to Alex. Thank, thank you for you. coming on the show. Thank you, Voice of God. Thank you. And we hope you have a great uh, Friday and an even better weekend. We'll see you live once again on Monday morning. Until then, take care. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.